Hello and welcome to the Apex Engineered Adjustable and Low Profile Series Tie Rod Installation. Let's get right into it. For this install, you're going to need a half inch drive ratchet, an adjustable wrench that's able to go as large as 15 sixteenths, a three quarter inch socket, and a 15 16 socket. You will also need a torque wrench able to go up to 60 foot pounds. Now check these bad boys out. These guys are a full steel construction. The hex adjuster is a full steel body so it won't strip out like aluminum counterparts. They come standard zinc plated but this customer opted for the powder coat option in this beautiful custom color. These studs are awesome. They are 4140 out of a full billet steel. They are hardened and will take about all your abuse. They have a 5 8 18 jam nut. They'll have two misalignment spacers. Two bump steer spacers for you low boys out there. Two of these half inch nuts and a pair of half inch washers. And two adjustable 4140 hardened steel studs. All right, let's tackle this adjuster. This adjuster is gonna have three pieces. The first piece is going to be this rod end. Next is gonna be a pair of jam nuts. And the billet steel adjuster. All right, so let's take a look at these studs. First thing you're going to do is install the bump steer spacers. Next is going to be these misalignment spacers. Take a look at how they're designed. They have a curved part and a straight part. You wanna make sure that curved part is where the rod end goes. All right, so we took that rod end in on the stud make sure these curved goes towards the rod end again so this way the whole entire assembly has full articulation then you're just going to hand tight your 15 16 jam nut and then just temporarily bring that washer and nut onto the stud before we get installing to the car, let's take a look at the adjustable stud versus the low profile. The adjustable has a considerable longer shank. This was going to limit your wheel size to 16s and larger, but the low pro works ideal in wheels that are smaller, like a 14 or a 15. The low profile assembles with a socket head bolt that comes off and has this little custom washer on there. Now note the low profile works great for the smaller wheels, but it does not have bump steer adjustment. So it's a trade off against the adjustable version. One thing to note is how it installs. It installs very similar. The stud goes through the heim joint. The washer goes in the back. Now one thing to note is make sure you use Loctite when you're installing this for the final time. You don't want this socket bolt to come out of there. Now first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove that cotter pin. So let's get this angled so you guys can see. There's going to be a cotter pin in there, but for video purposes we already had that removed. First thing you're going to do is you're going to remove that cotter pin. Then you're going to loosen up the nut that holds the tie rod stud. Loosen that a little bit. Loosen up the jam nut on the tie rod's steering rack portion. Loosen that up just a little bit as well. Now go find a hammer and smack that up all on the floor. Take that tie rod stud out of there and unthread the tie rod from the steering rack.
Now, when installing the tie rod, make sure you use anti-seize when threading it back on, but for video purposes, we didn't. Now, you wanna unthread the rod end just a hair for safety. You usually wanna leave about an eighth inch to a quarter inch of exposed thread. So we're just gonna do that right now before we install the stud. Next, you're gonna grab your tie rod studs. We're gonna remove that 15 16 jam nut that's off the back. And we're gonna keep your two, two bump steer spacers on there. You don't necessarily need to have them once you're done with the alignment, but we do recommend it's a good starting point. And when you start driving, you might need to remove or add those as you go. Now keep one of the misalignment spacers and remember the side that goes towards the rod end. Slip that stud right into that rod end with that nice tight fit. Put in the misalignment on the other end and finish that off by hand tightening that 15 16 onto the stud. Next, you're gonna remove the half inch nut from the top of the stud and the half inch washer. Now slip that into the steering knuckle. Now, sometimes these take a little bit of persuasion, but I'm sure you guys can get it in there. Now put on that half inch washer on top of the stud and the half inch nut. Grab the three quarter inch socket, put that on your half inch drive ratchet and tighten that sucker up. Next, swap those sockets to a 15 16 and tighten up that lower 15 16 jam nut. All right, now whip out your big dog and start torquing the nuts down. Make sure you torque them to 60 foot pounds. And that is your install. Now let's take a look at this thing. You got a jam nut on both sides, which you'll tighten once your alignment is done. Adjust your toe by simply turning it one way or the other way. Our tie rods have a right hand thread and left hand thread versions. Generally, if you have a brand new steering rack, there'll be a right hand thread versions. Or if you kept your factory rack with your factory inner tie rods, they will have a right hand one side and a left hand one side. Make sure you take note of that when ordering so we don't accidentally send you an incorrect side. Running the adjustable and low profile tie rods require no chassis modification and is a straight bolt in process. Simply unscrew the old tie rod and re-screw this one in. The only things that we feel like we should note is we do not supply the inner jam nuts for this. So if you do not have the inner jam nuts on the steering rack, you may have to source that. We used to supply them, however, due to a difficult time finding the left hand version of the inner jam nut, we no longer supply them.